Can I hand over to Martin Reeves, who is the Chief Executive of Coventry City Council. Thank you, Jane, and, and good afternoon, everyone. Can I just say how incredibly proud I am to have been asked to come and say a few words to you this afternoon, but at the same time, make it very clear how humbled I am to do that too. Um, I would love, genuinely would have loved to have been here with you all day. I've followed as best I can on social media, um, and particularly Twitter feeds. Um, I was committed already to a, a national piece of work with Macmillan Cancer um, and other health colleagues, so genuinely apologies. I would have, um, for anything else, I would have prioritised being here. Um, I wanted to share some thoughts with you. Um, I hope um, they resonate and link to what you've already been discussing um, today. There's absolutely no doubt at all from the Girl Summit in 2014 and the Girl Power and the power for those who have heard me speak on many other issues across this city that the power of mobilisation, the power of the voice from communities, from children, from adults, from families is the way in which change has always happened and how sustainable change for the future can ever happen. That is the truth. As important, as powerful, as political leaders, policy makers are and should recognise themselves to be with regards so they can never surrogate their responsibility to make change in that way, is most definitely, all of the evidence tells us, that the way in which this kind of change, this need for radical change around female genital mutilation happens from the grassroots up. And from what I've seen and heard, albeit from third party today and not being here physically with you, clearly the stories, the power of what's been shared today in a really, really honest and difficult way is a way in which this change really does happen in my view. There's absolutely no doubt that this practice violates the fundamental rights of all girls and women to live free from violence and discrimination. And I, as a man standing up on this stage, who happens to be the chief executive of this city council here, will say that and will continue to say that and will be prepared to debate this and add whatever I can. I was one person um, determined in this city to end this within a generation. How is Coventry responding? You, you'd have had detailed conversations today. There's absolutely no doubt about that. I have to tell you that... Being a chief executive and being in the council chamber in Coventry now for almost six years and seeing many debates, and I have to tell you, and I've got some politicians in my eye line, not always those debates evidence-based and as necessarily always the most wholesome of debates where party politics sometimes get in the way. Let me tell you the most proud I've been, genuinely proud I've been, was sitting there and watching and hearing the passion the raw emotion evidence of a debate and then a motion cross-party about the determination, in this case, for the municipal power of a local authority of Coventry City Council to stand up and to speak truth to power and to end this. And that is the most proud I've been in the, in the chamber. It was incredibly emotional to watch and to hear, but to actually see that maturity and that absolute conviction which politicians had in that time, at that place, and to follow through was awe-inspiring, genuinely. And nobody else has done that at this stage. And I would certainly ask, across the local government family, that many more local authorities up and down this country engage in exactly that debate and have exactly those kind of cross-party motions. Because as busy as the political agenda is in places like Coventry and up and down the country, this must not be peripheral. But you're wondering why, why is... Reeves putting up a slide about Coventry as a city of peace and reconciliation. And what is the relevance? It is known to us that we have a global, quite rightly, globally acclaimed view of this city as being genuinely the center for peace and reconciliation and understanding the damaging impact of war and conflict. But why, why the relevance to the discussions here today about female genital mutilation? Let me be really clear. As powerful as this city has been, in terms of resolution and peace, as powerful as this city has always been and will always be with regards to celebrating 
celebrating diversity of culture and people from all backgrounds, and long may that continue. This city, above all, because of its role globally, is a city that opens up the most difficult, sometimes the most harrowing, the most troubling of conversations, and allows those conversations to happen. Doesn't just allow them to happen, but actually reaches out for those conversations to make them happen. And as I've just said to colleagues, once having crossed that line, never takes a backward step. That's Coventry. That's the nature of this city. And female gentle mutilation, the necessary and difficult conversations about that and actions on the back of it need to absolutely be the hallmark of what this city is incredibly proud of in the future. I've heard about some of the activity and change already within our city. Change that undoubtedly needs to come from the communities themselves. And I think we're in a strong position in Coventry. In fact, I know we're in a strong position in Coventry to really harness that community power, that asset in our communities. Look who's here today. Look at you and the many others that, sh that could and will be with us on this journey. Then you start to realise that this is doable. This actually can be translated away from words into action. But not necessarily, as I said earlier on, surrogate in our responsibility as leaders, as politicians, as policymakers, and indeed as practitioners across all of the professions from what we can do, but by acknowledging in the most humble, powerful way that by letting go and allowing, once having given those conditions for change, communities to really mobilise themselves and to make that change for themselves and for us to support them and not be in the way of them to affect that positive change, even in the most difficult circumstances, is for me the characteristic of our place and our leadership of the future. And certainly public health in Coventry, the City Council, all of our statutory partners, all the time I'm here, we will continue to ensure this isn't just about top-down, we know what's best. We will provide opportunities and action for these discussions with communities and for communities. It's clearly everyone's responsibility. And there should be zero tolerance. There should be a clear differentiation and no equivocal nature of what is right and wrong when it comes to female genital mutilation. And for the notion of speaking truth to power in all of that sense, and this is not for the faint-hearted. And this is not about being unequivocal this is about being unequivocal in what we do. And this means we have to stand shoulder to shoulder and be absolutely clear together about evidence, about the power of stories, and I know you've heard some amazing stories today, and the translation of that into concerted action, which makes a long-term difference, but does it in a pace and a way which means we're determined together to affect this change and to stand up in the same way that communities in this city have done for many years against those areas that we palpably know are wrong and should not be happening, not just within our city limits, within the homes and the communities in our city, but anywhere else in this country or the world, then we should stand together to say that and to continue to be strong together about zero tolerance in this area. I don't want to say much more. I feel genuinely, and I mean this, for those that know me, I tend to speak um, how I see things, and that means that sometimes people don't necessarily, in fact, a lot of people don't necessarily agree with what I say, and sometimes I polarise opinion. The truth is I'm humbled to be here. As a man standing up on this stage, I have two children, five and seven years old, both girls, two daughters. And what do I hope for them for the future in a very you know, different cultural family background to maybe others in this room? may be similar to many, but I hope, as any father would, for many things for my two daughters, many things I hope come true for them. But one thing I'm absolutely determined, and I know, is that whatever happens in the future for them, I always want them to understand and to know that they have absolute control, power and determination over themselves and their body. And I want them to always know that. And I want us to get into the necessary debates about power, about the absolute devastating impacts you've heard today 
about female genital mutilation. And to not be silent, to not silence others, to not fear the nature of those conversations, use evidence and the power of stories for us to be able to be brave enough together to step over that line, but to really ultimately understand the impacts this is having and the fact that as a set of communities and as people together, we can affect this change. But to be humble ultimately to understand who really can make this difference. So I would argue and ask my final comment to each and every one of you that the currency, the power, the confidence that should be given to this journey, the difficult journey that everyone is on, that's been shown through the commitment of this conference today and the pride of Coventry yet again being at the front, not at the back of the queue, but pioneering pathfinding in the way that absolutely is the most fundamental and the most profound, that I would ask you, and I know you will do this, that beyond the conference today, we move beyond just this incredible set of words and actions together to stimulate even more action, to spread this discussion, debate and action even further across Coventry with other groups and across this country and across the globe. I know you'll do it. That's why you're here today. And I will do anything I can to help you in that journey. Thank you very much.